said earlier before some of you got in here, and I'm so grateful. This is a nice crowd on such bad weather days. God, I thank you. So Jesus will always make a way. And I said, I always ask God to let me preach with the Holy Spirit, whether I have 10 people or 10,000 people. So you're going to get the full Jesus message today. Not a, uh, a, a broken down one or, or a half one. You're getting the full one today because I need this myself. I need Jesus will make a way. And let us not, before I get started, let us not be dismayed. What a friend we have in Jesus. We want to see more kids and youth and parents. We have to testify. If we want to see more youth and parents on Sunday mornings and we have to go to the superintendent of the school board, Dr. Jason McCandless, and say, look, we can't have all these sports activities on Sundays. I know you all have been doing this for years. I went to him when I first got here. But parents, if you organize, even if your kids are grown, but remember what they went through. And I understand, I understand that they're scholarships or whatever, but we also have a moral obligation to make sure that our kids have a foundation so that when things get rough, they have someone to go to. Now, I know I'm preaching to the choir right now because you are here. However, I need you to spread the word. Amen? Jesus will always make a way. You hold me safe beyond the reach of my enemies. You save me from violent opponents. That's a translation from the New Living Bible of Psalm 1848b. And for me, this complements our Lucan text today, chapter 4. Verses 1 through 13. But I want you to hear this story first. Some years ago on a hot summer day in Florida, where a lot of our people are right now in Florida laughing at us. And I'm ashamed to say, sometimes I say, God, you know, you can let it get cold in Florida if you want. And let them know what they're missing. And if I say it out loudly, Nelson will say, Pastor, that's just wrong. And I will say, God, I'm sorry. But a hot summer day in South Florida, a little boy decided to go for a swim in the old swimming hole behind his house. In a hurry, not thinking, he dove into the cool water. He ran out the back door, leaving behind shoes, socks, shirt as well. He flew into the water, not realizing that as he swam toward the middle of the lake, an alligator was swimming toward him. His mother in the house was looking out the window and saw the two as they got closer and closer and closer together. In other fear, she ran toward the water, yelling to her son as loudly as she could, Baby, watch out, watch out, watch out! Hearing her voice, the little boy became alarmed and he made a U-turn to swim to his mother, but it was too late. Just as he reached her, the alligator reached him. From the dock, the mother grabbed her little boy by the arms just as the alligator snatched his leg. That began an incredible tug of war between the two. The alligator was much stronger than the mother, but the mother was too passionate to let go. A farmer happened to drive by, heard the screams, raced to the area, took from his truck his gun, and shot the elevator, the alligator. Remarkably, after weeks and weeks in the hospital, the little boy survived. His legs were extremely scarred by the vicious attack of the gator, and on his arms were deep scratches where his mother's fingernails dug into his flesh in an effort to just hang on to him. Then came a reporter to the hospital who interviewed the little boy after the incident. <sighs> 
the newspaper reporter asked if he would show him his scars. So the boy lifted his pant legs, and then with obvious pride, he said to the reporter, but look at my arms. I have great scars on my arms, too. I have them because my mom wouldn't let go of me. We can all identify with that little boy with many scars. No, not from alligators, but the scars of a painful past or even what's going on in our lives now. Scars are developing. Some of those scars are unsightly, and we want to cover them up and we, because they cause deep regret and pain. But some of those wounds are because God held on and refused to let us go. In the midst of our struggles, God has been holding on to us. God wants to protect us and provide for us in every way. But sometimes we have foolishly, like that little boy, the cool water waded into dangerous situations. Or maybe it wasn't anything that we'd done. It was just plain life that has placed us in terrible situations. Our swimming holes of life had been filled with peril. And we forget that the enemy is always waiting to attack. That's when the tug of war begins. And through all of the physical and emotional scars, we can be grateful. Why? Because Jesus has been there holding on to us and will never let us go. Because of Jesus' relationship with God and because of what he was sent on earth to do, that being becoming the ultimate sacrifice for our sins, Jesus was protected because nothing spoils God's plans. But that's if we're obedient, if we are obedient like Jesus. Let's discuss this text. The devil tempts Jesus. For those of you all who don't believe in the devil, look at the text. The devil tempts tempts Jesus as he, we find out when we continue reading chapter 4 of this Lucan text, that he's about to begin his ministry in Galilee. Remember, every time when you're on the track with Jesus, every time you try to do something good, there's Satan trying to attack you. The devil wants Jesus to literally deny God and worship him. The devil is so stupid. Yes, I said it. I'm not afraid of it. He could attack me right now, and maybe my mouth would be closed, but that's only if God allows, and I'll call down first gentleman or Martha Ann Donaldson, because she's going to be giving the, um, one of the, the messages during Lenten services, and hopefully they can read some of the stuff that and finish the sermon. So I'll say it again. The devil is so stupid that he ignores that all he is offering Jesus already belongs to Jesus because God has given Jesus authority over everything. So what does Jesus do? Jesus responds to the devil with the temptations, with scriptures and promises of God, of God's word. We must fight temptations with the word of God. Oh, you're not as familiar with the Bible too much, you may be saying right now? Then sing hymns or contemporary Jesus song. Oh, you're saying you're not too familiar? with those songs either, then just say with everything that you have, Jesus, please help me to not give in to these temptations. I was on my way from the calling hours from, from Russ on this past Friday. I opened with prayer and a song. 
And you know how I feel about a cheese and a cracker. And we didn't have any in the house because I'm cutting back on cheese and crackers. I love a good cheese. Don't care how much it is, I love a good cheese and a good cracker. And as I was passing Stop and Shop, Guido's, then Price Chopper, I said, Jesus, please don't let me turn into these places and get any cheese and crackers. And as I drove past, I started laughing. I said, oh, okay, God, I'm living my sermon. Like you say, live the sermon. Jesus, and you may think that's a small feat, but I was thanking God all the way to the condo. I didn't stop. I got home and told Nelson Ross, I didn't get any cheese and crackers today. He said, what about olives? <laughs> said, didn't stop and get those either. Jesus will make a way. Here we go. We're going to pick up. And please know that temptations, that, that being the possibility of sinning, and you said, but pastor, how can buying cheese and crackers be a sin when your doctor tells you to back off because she wants to keep you around for a little while? And just think, it's not just because I would eat a little piece of cheese like this. I'll eat a piece of cheese like that. A temptation to sin because there is scripture that says this temple, your temple, is holy and belongs to God. Pick up. And we can also know that temptations can come in many forms, other forms like losing hope, wanting to give up because life situations are not going well, but the text shows us that when we fight temptations, when we fight the devil, the tempter, the devil, Satan, will leave us alone and depart from us like he departed from Jesus. And you may be saying, oh, well, Jesus was God. Jesus made him go away. Yes, Jesus is God. But Jesus was also human. You remember, he was famished. He was hungry. And you know how folks get when they get hungry. So how can we apply this text to our lives today? First, be filled with the Holy Spirit and be led by the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit and be led by by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Jesus was human too. How like Jesus, you must spend time with God. There's no other way. But first, you must accept Jesus as your Savior and then be devoted to God like Jesus was. Don't think that no harm or nothing horrible will happen in your life. Be filled with the Holy Spirit and be led by the Holy Spirit. Next you better know that temptations are real. Temptations are real. Know that Satan the devil will always try to sway you from God. Didn't he try to sway Jesus? Didn't he try to sway Jesus? But remember, we always have the right of choice. Just like I was driving past Stop and Shop, and Guido's, and when the last one came, Price Chopper, it was like the car was swaying to turn, and I was going like this. Now, I know it was my imagination, but it looked like the car was swaying, but I fought, I fought, and I didn't choose to make that turn. You always have the right of choice. Satan will tempt you with, oh, you don't need to go to church today. You don't need to pray or do daily devotionals. You don't need to forgive your enemies. 
You don't need to do anything that pleases God. Why? Because just place yourself first. If Jesus would have given in to those temptations, he would have been placing himself first as a human being. So first, be filled with the Holy Spirit and be led by the Holy Spirit. Next, know that temptations are real. And finally, believe that you will be victorious. The situations we go through may be difficult, and at times we may want to give up. But remember, Jesus, as I said a little while ago, he was famished. He was hungry. But Jesus trusted God and knew that God would make a way. Just like Jesus will always make a way from us. Jesus was able to quote God's promises because he knew and trusted them. That's how Jesus knew that God would make a way from him out of the temptations. Remember that with Calvary, Jesus received scars, scars in his hand, scars in his side, scars on his feet. But he was protected from being defeated by his physical death. Remember, there is Resurrection Sunday. And like that mother holding on to her son for dear life when the alligator caught him, know that Jesus is holding on to you. Jesus is holding on to me. But like that little boy, we just can't let go of Jesus. Like he didn't let go of his mother. And then let our scars become testimony to others about how Jesus made a way in our lives. We think when Jesus has brought us through something that we're supposed to just let it stay in here. Tell the world how Jesus has delivered you. Tell the world, and your world may be your family, and they may laugh and make fun, oh, mom, oh, dad, oh, grandma, that wasn't Jesus. And you can always respond, yes, it was. Because Jesus held on to me, and I held on to Jesus. Amen? Jesus will make a